What's up guys, we're back with another Path of Exile video. In this video, we're gonna go over an easy strategy that you can implement while doing your Wildwood events that's going to drastically increase the effectiveness. So let's jump into it. The Wildwood events can feel hit or miss sometimes. Sometimes you'll have a great event, find a vendor, complete one of your Wildwood quests, maybe even find some currency or items. Other times you can walk away with literally nothing and feel like you kind of wasted your time. No one likes wasting their time, so I'm going to give you a tip to almost guarantee you will find at least one event in the Viridian Forest, if not two, three, or all four events. If you haven't checked out the League Mechanic yet, I posted a video last week going over the basics. It will be here as a card in the corner of this video. As we all know, PoE is basically RNG the game. So there is still a chance you can come up empty handed even after using this method, but the chances are pretty slim. Before we go into the method, we first need to understand how the Wildwood events are structured. When you load into the Viridian Forest, the map is always a square. There's always at least four events in every plunge into the Viridian Forest, and each of those four events is always located at the corners of each side of the map. It's also important to understand what classifies as an event. The events are not always a vendor or a quest mob. Sometimes the event can just be a piece of lore or an altar. So keep this in mind because it's pretty easy to overlook these events if you don't realize that they are one. Most of the time when you load into the map, there will be a trail of wisps that you can follow to lead you to your first event. The first event is the hardest part of the puzzle. Once you find your first event, you can almost guarantee you will be able to find at least one other event. Using simple geometry, we can figure out what direction we need to head in order to find the next event. Remember, the events are always in the corners of the map. So once you reach the first event, if you cannot travel any further down, then you're either in the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner of the map. If you cannot travel further left, then you're in the bottom left corner. If you cannot travel further right, then you're in the bottom right corner. In either scenario, you want to travel straight up to reach the next event. Now, it should be noted that there are obstacles along the way that will cause you to veer right or left, but try to keep as close as you can to traveling straight up. The same can be said if the first event is in the top of the map. You're either in the top left or the top right. If you cannot move further left, you're in the top left. If you cannot move further right, then you're in the top right. In either scenario, you want to travel straight down to reach the next event, keeping in mind any obstacles that are along the way that might cause you to veer left or right. Once you reach the second event, if you still have juice left, then you'll want to travel either straight right or straight left, depending on which corner you ended up in and depending on which direction you traveled in. Now where things get to be a bit more complicated is when you don't have a trail of wisps to follow at the beginning of the map. This can happen, it doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. We're going to call again on another geometry concept. We know that a square can be split into two right angle triangles. The Pythagorean theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Using this theory, we can figure out the best route to take. Now, it should be noted that the maps are almost assuredly not perfect squares, and you will not load into the exact center of the map. That would be too easy. We can still use these concepts, though, to roughly determine the best route to take when there are no wisps to follow. Using the Pythagorean theorem, if we assign the values of 2 to a and b as an example, we can see that c equals approximately 2.8. So if our character is somewhere along the sea line, the distance to the closest wall is going to be shorter if we travel on a diagonal opposed to moving horizontally or vertically. Because remember, the events are in the corners, so if we travel vertically or horizontally, we're going to have to do the former or latter once we reach the wall of the map to find the event. So if there are no wisps to follow, just pick a diagonal and go. Now this is where some guesswork is required, and there is a chance that you might guess wrong and end up moving away from the shortest distance, as we do not know where our character is on the sea line. If you do end up guessing wrong, you will still almost certainly hit at least one event, but you might not have enough juice to reach a second. It should be noted if you do find a trail of wisps along the way, to follow that as it will lead you to your first event, and then you can follow the steps I mentioned earlier to find the other events. To summarize and simplify, the maps are square. Once you load in, if you have a trail of wisps to follow, follow them until you reach your first event. Then either travel up or down to reach the second event. If you still have juice left, travel left or right. If you don't have wisps to follow in the beginning, travel on a diagonal until you reach a wall, and then travel up or down depending on which direction you came from. Hopefully this video helps you make the most out of your Wildwood events. 
If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It does really help with the YouTube algorithm. I make bi-weekly content about various gaming topics and Let's Play videos. Until next time, have a great day slash night.